here to see Mr. Parkhurst. Mr. Parkhurst is just having his dinner. Well, if he wants to be around for breakfast, you better tell him to see me. Here, Harold. Open this one first. Oh, Cousin Over, you shouldn't have. Mm, yes, darling, I know. Then I would never have heard the end of it if I hadn't. Oh, thank you, Redworth. Did he say something again? Yes. He just wished me a happy birthday. I always miss it when Radcliffe says something. But you always miss anything that anybody says, darling. Hmm? Because you don't listen. Oh, ostrich. How elegant. And the wallet is from Radcliffe, darling. What thing is this for me? Not typically generous of you, Cousin Ollie. And not typically crude. <laughs> Open ours next, Harold. Oh, uh, I will, but you'll have to excuse me just for a few minutes. You're so lucky to have someone like your cousin Harold to live with you all these years since Frank passed away. Don't be so patronizing, darling. It doesn't suit you. I just meant that Harold seems so devoted to you. The only thing Harold is devoted to about me is my money. Doctor, would you be so kind? Of you think there's something wrong? I know there is. <laughs> so shocked, darling. Harold and I have a wonderful relationship. I provide him with almost anything that money could buy. And he provides me with amusement and companionship. And the latest gossip. You should hear the story he tells about you these days. Please. Excuse me. We're going to have that kind of money right now. You're going to have to give me more time. You've had time. We'll have to lean on the old. No, please. Cousin Lily isn't feeling well. Don't talk. I won't allow that. Please. My, my, Harold. How good that. Cousin Lily, I'm sorry. I... You always are sorry, Harold. What was it this time? Blackjack? Poker? Or have you once again refined your system for roulette? How much does my cousin owe you, Mr... Savazzi. Tito Savazzi. They ounce $12,000. What you'll get is 6000 Just enough, I suspect, to save you causing my cousin any great bodily harm. And just little enough to stop you giving him any more credit. Now, would you please get out of my house? Cousin Maria. Just keep quiet. This is the last time I'll bail you out. The last time. Because, Lily, the last time, I promise. I, I promise. I won't. <laughs> Alice, bring my bag. We have to get out of bed. <laughs> your money, I'll get it for you as soon as she goes to sleep. You work this racket on her offer? All you have to know is what I tell you. Now we do everything to it just the way we planned it. You wait for the cars to leave, then you watch for my signal. When you get it, you come right back here to the kitchen door. I'll give you the money. Then we're finished. I never want to see your face again. You got that? I still say it's the easiest money I've ever made. Wilde told us some years ago, are simply a tedious pack of people who haven't got the remotest knowledge of how to live, nor the smallest instinct about when to die. Now, the uh, 
distinct problem for aging Lily Parkhurst is that her young and thoroughly disreputable cousin Harold not only believes that that statement is a basic fact of his life, but also has taken great pains to alter that same fact. Auspiciously enough, he has chosen tonight the celebration of his 40th birthday to undertake the perfect murder. reach 40 and has not made himself heard of, he is not worth regarding with respect, or at least so said Confucius some 2,500 years ago. Harold Parkhurst has reached the age of 40 and he desperately craves that respect and success, not to mention Cousin Lily's money, which will make it all possible. He craves it so much that tonight, after months of planning, he expects to perform not one, but two perfect murders. Rather unscrupulous, you say? No, oh, but who's to say where the yardstick for success lies? A thief is only a thief when he's caught, and a murderer only a murderer when he believes it to be true. I wish you'd back there. I'd much rather have her in hospital. Uh, now, what do you expect, Harold? Well, it's the same on one of your little escapades that explodes under the scene. If there's any change in her condition, call me immediately. You know, I don't mean for this thing. Yeah, I know. One of these days, our heart's just going to give out. Home. No, I would, I would rather do that, too. Uh, I'm sure Cousin Lily would rather have me do it. As you will. Thank you to prepare this for me. 
but she's just blatantly obvious. Did you really expect to get away with this? glass of milk to kill an elephant. <laughs> That's not very funny, Africa. I know, it's not meant to be. <laughs> oh, oh, by the way, your, your legs should be getting cold right now. <laughs> my body. Oh, my body. Cold. You won't get away with it. <laughs> You're in the second stage now. You know, you're wrong about me not getting away with this. I have the whole thing planned, and it's perfect. Perfect. I mean, under different circumstances, Cousin Lily, I know you would be, you'd be very proud of me. I mean, take the man that came here tonight. I mean, I don't owe him any money. We made a deal. He came here, and he acted it out just splendidly. You know where he is now? Waiting for me to signal him so he can come to the house and get his payoff. You know what kind of payoff he's going to get? The same kind you are. Because I can't have anyone around who can point the finger at me. That's why I have the doctor. Why? And I don't even like that doctor. You know that. But I wanted him to see you have an attack. That's why I got you excited. Now when I call him on the phone and tell him you're dead, he'll think it's natural and it won't even be an autopsy. You can stop looking at me like that. I mean, just stop it. And what do you expect? I've lived with you all these years, and you know yourself that you were supposed to die a long time ago. Even the doctor said so, and you didn't. I mean, don't get me wrong, cousin Lynn. I mean, I don't want you to misunderstand me. We've had good times, right? And we've had our laughs, uh -huh, you know. But I mean, I'm in my 40s now. I've been waiting. Waiting for you to die, and you haven't died. I'm waiting and waiting and waiting, and you're humiliating me, and you're degrading me, and you're right, I do come crawling back to you like, like a dog with his tail between his legs. I mean, I'm in my 40s. A man in his 40s is supposed to have some pride. Don't look at me that way. You die. You die? Ratcliffe. 
keep an eye on her. And then, uh, she's not going to go anywhere, but uh, I have to do a few things first, and then I'm going to call the doctor. This is uh, Harold Parkhurst. Yes, Harold, what is it? I was just bringing Cousin Lily uh, her cookies and milk, and... Doctor, she... she's dead. Well, now, just calm down. If that scene didn't happen tonight... But you can't blame yourself for Lily's death. You all know she's been living on borrowed time for years. Doctor, I, I, I hate to be here alone. I... All right, I'll, I'll be around about midnight. I'll make out a death certificate and I can give you a sedative. How are you still there? Be, yes, Doctor, I was just thinking. I, I hate to think of it now, but I guess it has to be done. I... What the? Well, I never liked the idea, but Cousin Lily, she always wanted to be... <laughs> Yes, I know. I, I'll arrange it myself. I'll send the better, I suppose. Yes, doctor. I'll be with you in 15 minutes. All right, Cliff, what do you think of your new master?
back here? I left my glasses in the other room. I was just doing some hammering. I was fixing something. How's Mrs. Parker? She's fine. She's fine. I won't be in the room. found another one in the trunk of the car. Boy, this really is one for the books. Yeah, I guess it is. Yeah, there's one thing you can tell me. What's that, Lieutenant? That bird that belonged to the old lady. He's been screaming like that since we got here. What's he saying? I don't know. Lily and Harold were the only ones who ever understood him. he's talking about. Two likable, despicable people who have shuffled off this mortal coil. The demise of the Parkhursts, Lily and Harold, brings to mind something Clarence Darrow said some years ago. Everybody is a potential murderer. I have never killed anyone myself, but I frequently get great satisfaction reading the obituary notices. So, until next we meet, this is Anthony Quayle reminding you that there is a touch of evil in all of us. Good night. Pleasant dreams.